Welcome to 144,000 Teachers, the First Fruits unto God and to the Lamb. We are coming again to the school of the highest order based on true education. We have studied the five roles of the Redeemer and that he also can be found in the sanctuary, which is the most complete, connected, and harmonious system of truth of the Bible. We have also seen in part one, the Creator's Law and Born to Live. Now, as we're pursuing part two on the Law of God, we are looking at Disobey and Die. The History of the Law of God on Earth Adam taught his descendants the Law of God and it was ended from father to son through successive generations. But notwithstanding the gracious provision for man's redemption, there were few who accepted it and rendered obedience. By transgression, the world became so vile that it was necessary to cleanse it by the flood from its corruption. The law was preserved by Noah and his family, and Noah taught his descendants the Ten Commandments. As men again departed from God, the Lord chose Abraham, of whom he declared, Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. To him was given the right of circumcision, which was a sign that those who received it were devoted to the service of God, a pledge that they would remain separate from idolatry and would obey the law of God. The failure of Abraham's descendants to keep this pledge as shown in their disposition to form alliance with the heathen and adopt their practices was the cause of their surgeon and bondage in Egypt. The statutes and the judgments to build a great nation. Keep their force as the Lord and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear of all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? At what nation is there so great, that are statutes and judgments so righteous to all this law which I set before you this day. No government could exist without law. Every nation has its law as its laws which command respect and obedience. No government could exist without them. And can it be conceived? that the creator of the heavens and the earth has no law to govern the beings he has made? Suppose that prominent ministers were publicly to teach that the statute which governed their land and protect the rights of its citizens were not obligatory, that they restricted the liberties of the people and therefore ought not to be obeyed. How long would such a man be tolerated in the pulpit? But is it a great, graver offense to disregard the laws of states and nations than to trample upon those divine precepts which are the foundation of all government? Satan hates the sacred statutes. The great plan of redemption results in fully bringing back the world into God's favor. All that was lost by sin is restored. For 6,000 years, Satan has struggled to maintain possession of the earth. Now, God's original purpose in its creation is accomplished. The sacred statutes, which Satan has hated and sought to destroy, will be honored throughout a sinless universe. Blow a trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed, on our solemn feast day, for this was a statute of Israel and the law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he went out through the land of Egypt. 
The wicked do not seek the statute. Salvation is far from the wicked, for they seek not thy statute. As we look now at section number four of the Restoration Movement, we are looking specifically at the Sabbath again and the statutes. And we have definitely discovered many beautiful things in that research that you will be seeing regarding the biblical calendar and the new moon phases. The Hebrew feast period began with the month of barley harvest and its paschal moon or moon of Abib, which was the appointed moon of barley harvest. The Passover was numbered according to the moon, that is, the days of the month were the same as the days of the moon. Indeed, the Hebrew word Odesh for month means also new moon. And it was the actual horn crescent new moon, not any fictitious new moon, that regulated the great festivals, for it was an observed moon. And as you study this important presentation, you will discover also that the reason why it is the horn crescent and not the conjunction or the first visible crescent that we must observe is because that's the only phase of the moon that allows us to establish the Passover correctly. And as well, you will understand that the barley was also involved. Two witnesses, one in the heaven, which is the new moon horn crescent, and on the earth, agriculture. So this way, it managed to balance the season. And as well, of course, the biblical calendar was a loony solar barley harvest new moon on crescent calendar it seems complicated but you will see as we present it it does make a lot of sense the biblical creation calendar which includes the seven day sabbath the feast the sabbatical year and the jubilee year is based on the sun moon stars and agriculture and the stars we have a magnificent study as well on the Maseroth, which is the first book that was ever written for the people of God, which they could see in the sky. And the Bible actually came after. And this is what you will discover, which we call the wheel within the wheel. And the first part of the wheel is the seventh day Sabbath, which points to the work of creation. And then the second part of the wheel, or the second wheel, if you will, is the seven spring and fall feast and these are pointing to the plan of redemption so we have the first wheel the work of creation and the second wheel is the plan of redemption so that's the wheel within the wheel then the third wheel would be the seven years complete which makes up the sabbatical year and we're looking here at restoration so that's the third wheel of the group of seven. And now when we have seven sabbatical years multiplied by seven times, we obtain 49 years and the 50th years is the Jubilee year. And you will discover in this study that biblically it is possible to establish where we are with not only the seven day Sabbath and the seven festivals during the year, but also the sabbatical year and the Jubilee year. And this is not attempting to predict the coming of Christ, but it's simply for repairing and restoring the wonderful calendar of our Maker. So we pray and hope that you will attentively listen to this important study and you will discover and hopefully join those of us who are restoring and repairing what has been destroyed for many, many generations. May the Lord bless you and cause his face is, is to shine upon you and give you peace always until we see you soon.